Hello, welcome to my short presentation on how to build a Docker image on top of your Kubernetes cluster. The game plan for this video is this is going to be part one of a at least part two, two parts total um, series just to show how you can do a Docker build pipeline leveraging your Kubernetes cluster. I recently was trying to set up um, Jenkins and allow people to build Docker images on top of that. Um, this is some of the things that I learned, so I wanted to make some recordings and, and capture some of that of what I learned. Um, the, the what, building a Docker image on top of our Kubernetes cluster, the why is because if you have a Kubernetes cluster lying around and you're lucky enough to, you know, you want to leverage that thing. You know, it's a very valuable compute, CPU resource, memory resource. Um, why wouldn't you want to? put your Docker pipeline on there. You shouldn't have to spin up just a regular, like a, if you're on Amazon, an EC2 instance running a Docker daemon to run Jenkins slaves or Jenkins masters. You should be able to leverage your, your Kubernetes cluster to do that. So when I do automation or anyone does automation, the first thing you want to do is learn about it, do some research, some learning, right? Do some manual um, research, try it, experimentation type work. And then once you get kind of a an understanding and a pattern, make a document of it. So in this case, I'm going to make a quick little video of that document. Um, that'll help me then, in part two, take a Jenkins server and apply what I learned in this video so that I have a, a more fully automated system. You know, you wouldn't want to run your Docker builds manually, although when you're in development stage, you might want to use this. You can leverage your Kubernetes cluster to do a Docker build without having to have a Docker host local, although nowadays most of us do anyways. So We'll move right into manually build a Docker image on Kate's cluster. So that'll all be demo. So we'll just jump over to some of the files I have. One of the files, this is a, a YAML file for Kubernetes that says um, basically, please launch a pod running a container and execute this command on that container. And that's going to give me a container that I can exec into. And if you've ever done Docker run, and then like attach or exec into an existing container that's running. This is just Kubernetes abstractions, right? It abstracts that stuff away, but underneath it's very um, parallel to these Docker commands. So what I'm asking Kubernetes to do is a replication controller, which is going to make sure that one pod is always running for this. For this case, it's not important um, because this is just a little bring it up, tear it down when I'm done. But if this was a web server, that comes into play. Everything else, that's just the name. I called it Docker Image Builder. We don't have to worry too much about this stuff. Um, the other important piece is I'm telling, when it launches this pod inside the pod, launch this container. I built myself a Docker container that's Alpine 3.4, and I installed the Docker package onto it. The next uh, important thing is when it does launch that container in my pod, it's going to invoke this command on the container. So, you know, if you do Docker run, and then pink BL Alpine Docker 3.4, you could say, you know, give me a shell, echo hello world. Well, I'm, I'm causing this to stay in a loop so it holds the container open for me. There's probably some other ways of doing it, but this is what I used for this demo. And then the really critical part that makes this all work is using a volume mount in Docker. It would be dash V, and then you'd give it the host path and then a colon and then where in the container you want to map it. So this is saying on the host where this pod runs this container, map the var run docker.sock file, and then inside my container, put it here. So that'll give me a pathway to get to the host. So um, pods get deployed to Kubernetes nodes, which are Docker hosts. They have Docker engines on them. It could also be Rocket. In this case, I'm using Docker. Um, so that's what that's doing. And then just to show you this Docker image, it's nothing spectacular, very simple. That's all I did. Update and then install this package, which allow us to run the Docker build command and the Docker run command. There's probably other things on the internet, but it was so simple I built it, pushed it to Docker Hub so I could use that. So, so the first things first, let's get our pod launched. So we're in our directory. There's our file, the YAML file we were looking at using cube control. I'm going to ask for it to create that, those objects in there, in this case a replication controller which will launch a pod which will have a container in it. 
So if we do cube control get pods, we should shortly see. There it is. So there's our, our pod. So now what we can do is we can um, use cube control yet again. And we can exec into it. And grab this. My autocomplete helped me, but it popped in the name from a previous run. And what I'm just saying, this is like doing a Docker run. If you replace this with Docker, it's very, very similar, right? Except where the pod name comes in. And Docker, you would give it a specific container name. And then I'm just asking for a shell. So, boom. So right now I have a turn, you know, an interactive session or an interactive terminal that's running on Kubernetes. So that, that in its own right is pretty sweet. So you could create, I suppose you could develop a workstation for your developers that they run on Kubernetes and they leverage that resource that you're already paying for. So pretty sweet. So just to make sure this is working, if we do this and Docker is not working on here, it's going to fail and tell us the Docker daemon can't be found. If it works, it's going to tell us that info. So that, that's a good sign. And then another quick um, smoke test is just to do a hello world with Docker run. So awesome. We have a container running on the Kubernetes cluster, right, inside a pod. And then we're inside that thing running Docker commands. So these will allow us to now build new Docker images leveraging our Kubernetes clusters resources. So I only have one monitor here, so you're going to see my, my cheat sheet. We're going to clone the Hello World project. And this is what we're going to use to build a new image with because it's real small and simple, which is good for demo purposes. So if we go in here. This is what it's made up of. They have a Docker file. They have a greetings.txt, which doesn't appear to be used. And then they have a hello file. So the hello file, there's the hello from Docker part right there. So what I'm going to do is override that with Bob. So it'll say hello from Bob now. Hello from Bob in that file. So now if we rebuild that image, right, we'll run a command like this, docker build, we'll tag it as hello Bob, and then we'll have a new image and it should say hello from Bob. So that's the build part real fast. And now if we do docker run, we can prove that we we're able to build this new image running on Kubernetes. So you know, it's, that gives us a lot of options to um, use the scalability of Kubernetes to use Jenkins, or you could choose any CI system, but it gives us a lot of options. That, that's kind of the, the first step of opening the door to doing that is you gotta be able to run the build command on top of that cluster system. So to clean that up, we can do this, just the delete command instead of the create command, and it'll get rid of those resources it created. So in this case, it'll be our pod and our replication controller in our um, Docker container. So that'll clean that off. So I did put a link here for this video, which I thought was, I've been reading this for years, every time I do anything with Docker and Docker, just so that I keep myself straight. But there's kind of two cases where you do child containers. That's where one container is running basically a Docker engine within it, and then it'll run another container. And then there's a sibling container pattern where you actually have a container, you do a Docker run, but instead of running within that container, it actually just sprouts it on the host that's underlying. So that's where um, creating that volume mount to the host um, docker.sock, that's how we did it. And that creates a sibling container. So go to this article that um, they wrote up, you know, this is many years old now, time flies, but it's it kind of lays out the different patterns and, and when you'd want to do the one. Um, I also have a Slack channel and I of course have email. If you have questions, I would use Slack ideally. My email tends to be a little bit slower going for me to keep up with it. Um, if you have questions or ideas, uh, inputs, anything like that, stuff you'd like to see, you can leave me a message in just the general channel and we can chat in there. That'd be great. So hopefully this is helpful and part two will pick up where this left off. Thank you for watching.